<laughs> so welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. In this video, we are going to be doing chit chat about the B-Link GT Ultra. This is by the way, the Intel edition. I understand they also have AMD Ryzen versions. However, when you're looking at the GT Ultra, this comes with a 13th generation i9 processor. And I was really intrigued to see what we can do. However, when it comes to playing some games with the onboard GPU and how can we having some rendering process going on. 32 gigabyte memory and one terabyte of internal storage. And we have the option to upgrade it with an external GPU. Nevertheless, I reviewed a lot of B-Link products throughout the years and I can tell you that I'm always quite satisfied with the overall quality. Only this i9 is slightly different when you're looking at the other ones they have released. So later on I will show you what I exactly mean. In here we're finding the manual, the GT Ultra manual, explaining some little bit about the product itself. So let's see what we're getting in here. So explanation of the connectors and of course the extension port when it comes to adding a GPU. Next up we're having everything you're going to be needing and what you can actually see and that is one of the biggest differences there is no external adapter. Nope, because the power supply is built inside of the machine. One of the things I find always very convenient that they're going to be giving you pictures, stickers, whatever to explain how the device works. So my first impression is quite positive. This thing is quite heavy but also when it comes to the size this thing looks like a really quality product. And I think that is one of the appealing things of B-Link. I've been reviewing those GTR series with the MD Rise on the inside and all of them I was very pleased with the, basically what I'm seeing in the outside but also on the inside. Next up we're going to be having a very interesting comparison. I love the clean look. At the front we're having an on off switch. We're having everything going to be needing for connecting a controller, even an SD card. So I think this machine is not built for gaming in my opinion, it's more for office work. We can of course play some games with it if you want to, but we're going to be testing that out while we're getting with the onboard GPU. So we do have a nice amount of USB ports at the back, but in my opinion you can never have enough of them. But you're going to be plugging in the cable of the power straight into the B-Link Mini PC. Going into the BIOS, here we can find all kinds of information regarding what you're getting when it comes to the specifications. But later on we're going to be doing a little bit of a ship use it and then wicked nerdy time. However, when it comes to the clocking speed and everything, there is a lot we can change out. Including thermal configuration and everything else. So what I'm going to be doing in this video, I'm just going to leave it as it is. I don't want to do a little bit of an overclocking, I just want to keep it basic as it is, how it comes out of the factory. Boost performance mode has been activated, standard, so we're not going to be changing it out. And it will be interesting to see what we can do when it comes to the settings. We're going to be pushing it to the limit. But first, but as you can see in the BIOS, there is absolutely a crazy amount of stuff that we can change out. We can even mess with the thermal functions if you want to. So if you want to say like certain moments that the machine should be like clocked back to a certain, let's say, clock speed when the temperature is reading a certain amount however there is a lot of stuff we can do but i'm not going to be touching any of these things i'm just going to leave it as it is already mentioned before so let's get into windows first boot up we're getting all of the choices that we're having for language keyboard settings you name it what you're getting with all your new installs of windows itself Okay, so a couple of things you need to take consideration when getting installed. First of all, choose your language and your region, of course. Already mentioned that before. And the next thing that we need to do is sell your soul to Microsoft. Yep, if you're going to be license agreement accepting. Okay, give this thing a freaking name. So let's call this thing the B-Link i9. And then, of course, we're having all kinds of settings. Set up the password if you want to or just leave it as it is. And this is one of the things I hate about from Windows 10. All of the crap that you need to shut down. And funny thing is, sign diagnostic data to Microsoft. There is no way of shutting it out. But however, this is what you're getting when it comes to Windows, of course. But let's get into some testing and see what we're getting with performance. Because this just a moment takes freaking forever and yep no signal there we go and let's it go so let's move on to the intel core i9 already mentioned this is the 13th generation within 45 watt of a max tdp so in here let's check out the bus frequency is the going to be the pc express 4.0 ddr5 22 gigabyte heaven with this particular model and let's see what is interesting do we have two slots let's check out we do got two channel dual slots over there and the onboard GPU. Yeah, the GPU itself, it's going to be interesting testing it out with some games. And of course, we can do a little bit of a test bench to stretch out to see how far we can push the device itself when it comes for the heat. So let's do a bench of the CPU and let's get into the temperatures too. 
So let's grab a couple of, let's say, programs. We're having CPU-Z for the testing of the test bench. And then we can see the performance over here, like pushing it 100%. And then, of course, the temperatures of the CPU or the package. And I can tell you the package cores are quite nice when it comes to the P and E cores. But temperature wise, I must say that even in, I'm guessing like I'm looking into the BIOS, it is boost performance mode. The temperatures are not bad at all. When you're looking at, let's say the desktop, let's say i9s nice, I've seen before. And something you can hear, but the loudness of the B-Link is quite nice. And in other words, this thing is not loud at all, which you have seen with all kinds of mini PCs. Most of them sound like a freaking vacuum cleaner. So moving into the Cinebench R23. And with Cinebench, we do have an overall nice score, if I may say myself. You can see over there that we're having a nice comparison with some other Intel CPUs. How accurate this is, is of course a different story, but the overall performance is not bad itself when it comes to the single and the multi-core, when it comes to the general statistics of the list of different Intel and AMD CPUs. But how about playing games, because we're only having an onboard GPU. In the past I've been checking out all kinds of i9s from different brands with a built-in Nvidia card. They were absolutely great and you could play almost all kinds of games when it comes to any games. But with a built-in GPU, the Iris is not super bad. But it's also not like a super powerhouse that we have seen with different chips like AMD. Resulting that we can play all kinds of basic indie games. The stuff that I personally love to play. Even the more demanding are really quite good on here. And getting into my old school Mortal Kombat 9 days, I am surprised how good it actually works. So for the AAA games from back in the day, for a couple of years ago, you can just play them without any problem. Pushing it into the limit with some killer instincts, man, this is such a cool finding game. You can see the GPU is like hitting instantly 98% of its capabilities. And that is one of the downsides of having an onboard ship like this. Emulation is an interesting story where we're starting off with some Sega Dreamcast on 4K rendering resolution and runs without no problem whatsoever. <laughs> But I just wanted to do some more testing with PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation Portable and push it to the limit. And in particular when it comes to playing some games that are really demanding. For example, the game Black over here with PlayStation 2, 4K rendering resolution, you can see that it pushes the GPU to its limit. And you do have a little bit of a dip here and there. Ladies and gentlemen, 
and this is Brazil. You're welcome to go holding see my option here! Mind. Make this one fresh. But in the end, if you're going to be doing testing with different kind of games, you can just see depending what kind of game, sometimes we do have great performance, but some games really struggle on the 4K rendering resolution due of the onboard GPU. The GT Ultra is an interesting device when it comes to the form factor, the way how they made it with the built-in power supply, but also if you're looking into some indie games, AAA games, but also when you're looking into emulation. We do have limitations with the GPU, so in the next video we're going to be checking out this docking station where we can implement the device and do a little bit more gaming and emulation to see how far we can push it with the right configuration. So consider subscribing, hit the little bell and let me know in the comments which games you want to see more running on this device. And it would be great to see you in the next video video.